So, what we're gonna do here is modify this special purpose shoulder rig for carrying an unusual large single action revolver with a scope mount. We want this holster to be able to accept the revolver with the scope still on it. So what I need to do is cut clearance in this section so the mounts can get past it. And then I might need to close back up. I'll probably need to close back up the last stitch on either side just by going through the same holes and adding another stitch to fasten it and tying it off. And that'll pretty much be it. I'll go and smooth the channel and shape it and rebevel and slick the edges and there shouldn't be all that much to it. Remove this section right here. Just take that whole area out so it has total clearance. And you should still have plenty of integrity left. As long as you got that hammer retention, should be fine. Well, and also, it's removing only, it's this only section. tracking down that, that length. Right? Yeah. So it's holding, I mean, it's a 10 inch barrel. Yeah, and it's, it's a formed holster. So you're holding really on the cylinder and the ejector rod and the barrel. That's really most of your retention. This actually isn't even touching the gun up here. This is clearance for the sight and the top strap. So I think there will probably be no difficulty simply removing this whole section. I think that may be the way to go. Then I just shape that in nicely and that ought to do it. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is determine the area to be removed. And I'm gonna draw that on here. Looks like it's gonna be right down to here. And you can draw on leather with pencil gently. It also kind of scribes the surface of the leather a little bit. Leather, of course, is very soft and it is easy to mark. And you want to be careful when you're making your markings on it and go gently so you don't mar the surface in any way in an area that you're not going to remove. You don't need to worry about the very edges of the slot because they're going to get beveled away and formed after it's cut. That looks good. And you have considerable leeway to shape it as you go along. Alright, that looks pretty parallel too. These lines don't need to be perfect. They're just a rough guide to start with. So I'm going to cut this away. I'm going to grind that in with a little sanding drum on the Dremel tool and adjust as needed. So I'm just gonna have to freehand this. And when you're cutting through heavy leather like this, you can't cut through all of it at once. You have to go through it in a series of cuts. Just each one is a little bit deeper than the last. And that's how you make a precision cut through very heavy leather like this. That's good, that falls right at the end of a stitch. That's all right. What I probably will wind up doing is flaring out into this a little bit and then wrapping my new stitch around there to tie that back up again. So first I make light cuts everywhere on the outline I've drawn. Follow in my scribed line. And there'll be plenty of material left here for this. So that looks good. So this is why I like to use this type of blade because you can follow a curve with it like this. Is that a traditional or like standard? This type? is actually a pruning blade for Arbory. This is, was made by Camelus for tree workers. Who, who, you know, work where, where at a tree farm, 
and that's why the handle is this bright blue color so you can spot it if you drop it mm -hmm. so this is just a traditional hawkbill blade it's also used for linoleum work they're also this little spider coat paring knife these are fantastic for leather because it's like has this it's almost a hawkbill blade it's more of a warren cliff but you can see the point is swept down it's very thin you can make it really sharp holds an edge for a long time and it is just the perfect shape you get a lot of control with it but you can't beat this for going around curves so that's what we do now we're just following the cuts around till i cut all the way through the leather little bit at a time and you just have to go nice and easy and make sure you follow that line carefully once you get it to a certain depth it gets easier because the blade naturally follows the line you've already cut. But you want to be real careful until that point that you don't veer outside the line. That's it! So now the piece has been removed. Let's see where we're at in terms of this going in here. I expect I might have to open it up some. And what I'm going to have to do, of course, is go back in here and smooth all these edges and form this by grinding. And then I'll rebevel all the edges to blend them in like this. So, does she go in now? Oh, it's looking. Oh, so the scope is hitting right here. Oh, no, you might be able to clear that. Okay. I think it may be there. Oh, I mean, oh, I'm gonna need to cut it a little deeper. Okay. That's all right. It's awful close now. Time for the adjustment stage. I think we've got the initial cut. All right. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, it looks like it's right where it's supposed to be. Okay. Time to just go in there and smooth everything up with a little sanding drum. And then slick the edges back up. And that's it. You want to use a relatively low speed so you don't burn the leather. Now I'm just using this to sculpt it. So just creating nice, smooth, even edges. sandpaper and I'm just giving it that last bit of smoothing and shaping is all corner there for a nice smooth transition and this will all get beveled and refinished and we'll tie that stitch up heading down the home stretch I've got everything nice and smoothed up I check the gun for fit transition the corners now I'm just going in with the number three edge beveling tool to trim all those edges and then it's just slicking it up with beeswax and putting that stitch in there and that's it down to here with my edge beveling tool and it just slices that corner off nice and easy creating a 
Smooth looking edge. Can that only go so deep? Yes, it can only cut so deep. The travel of the edge beveling tool is limited by its shape there and the depth of the groove. So now you got to do around a curve in little stages like that and choke up on the tool closely. So the hard part is we're well past that now. This is just the finishing touches. Look at that. Much better. Now the inside. And really some places you can't quite reach. I wrote the edge building too, so I can't really reach in there. But no matter, I can just take this and give it a little touch on the inside. So low speed. Just a little touch to take off that ragged edge. Now there's a nice beveled contour right in there. And then this will blend down into here. Okay, now the last thing left to do is just slick this up, and then that is going to do it. Ah, uh, yes, I like that. This is a general purpose leather sculpting tool. It's for carving in part, but it's also great to slick up edges like this and form them a little. And that's yeah, what I'm doing. So that's not taking off the beeswax? Uh, the beeswax, it doesn't take it off. It kind of just pushes it into there. And that's what I'm doing. You can also warm the surface, uh, like with a hair dryer or a heat gun a little bit to get the wax to soften, and it soaks in. I just want a little bit. There we go. Soften that wax up a little and work it in. Oh, yeah, that did it. So I now have more than enough wax on there. I'm just Distributing it to the areas where I want it to be. The excess wax with a piece of scrap t-shirt and I am doing my final polish all in one direction. And that is the last bit to just creating a nice smooth edge where the leather was cut and formed. And then that's it. That is all there is to it. It's burnishing everything nicely. And so I'm blending this into the original factory edge. See how it's pushing everything down into there and it's looking as smooth as this now. And then we just go into here to do that last bit. You never know it wasn't made that way. Well, actually you would if you looked at the cut stitch, but 
Okay, I believe we are finished. That is it. A little simple custom modification of a holster for an unusual revolver with an optic. So as you insert the gun, you have to make sure to lift it past this section so the scope clears that. And then it has seated all the way down there. We have complete clearance of the mount. And well, that's it. You can fasten your retention strap over the hammer spur. And also, once you're wearing it, it'll tend to, you know, pull itself tighter. So that, there you go.